Health officials in Maine are on high alert after one of the deadliest super spreading events in the country. In Boston, the annual leadership meeting for drug maker Biogen also became a hotbed for the virus. Health experts fear last week's celebration of Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett may have been a super spreader event. Super spreader. It's been used to describe everything from a business conference, a motorcycle rally, and a wedding. But defining what a super spreader actually entails in the context of the coronavirus pandemic is complicated. Epidemiologist Sam Scarpino has studied the spread of the virus. From one perspective, it simply means that there were a lot of infections that resulted from a single infected individual. And we call that an event if there isn't anything particular about that individual. There are specific things about individuals that may cause them to be infectious for much longer periods of time, and then they can infect many, many other individuals. And we typically refer to those individuals as super spreaders, although we want to really try to be careful to distinguish um, whether there's anything about particular people uh, as opposed to just the locations they find themselves in. Large-scale gatherings are just one factor that facilitate a super spreader. The environment in which that event takes place is as important. So we think about somebody sitting down at a restaurant is infectious with COVID and the air conditioning is blowing across their table onto other individuals and you end up with 10, 15, 20 other people infected. That would be an event. Confined spaces with poor air circulation, outdoor events without proper distancing or mask wearing are all hallmarks of super spreading, according to research. As we've learned more about the disease, as we understand now that aerosol transmission is an aspect of, of this pathogen, one of the key features for this is any setting where you have masks off, any setting where you're indoors, especially with poor ventilation, is going to be at high risk for transmission. Any time where you have people trying to project their voice for any reason, they are also projecting COVID if they are infectious. According to the CDC, super spreader incidents in February 2020 played a, quote, notable role in the early spread of coronavirus in the U.S., informing the guidelines put in place today. The events, which included Mardi Gras, a biotech business conference in Boston, and a funeral held in Albany, Georgia, are credited with amplifying transmission beyond each event's original location. Despite limits on gatherings, travel restrictions, and mask ordinances, similar incidents, like the massive Sturgis, South Dakota motorcycle rally, to a small wedding in Millinocket, Maine, have yielded eerily similar results. Certainly these large events, Sturgis, maybe attending a wedding, those are super spreader events. COVID-19, in order for it to be sustained in a population, in order for it to cause an epidemic, it's also relying on these smaller events, 10 individuals getting infected, 15 individuals getting infected. To see an example of how transmission, infection, and amplification unfold, look no further than the White House. We're seeing that effect as the President of the United States tests positive for, for COVID-19. Thinking about the potential for super spreading events, knowing how many individuals, how many different parts of the United States the President visits and encounters over the course of even a day, that individual is at high risk for spreading the virus to lots of other people. And so in some ways we are seeing the super spreading potential of this virus playing out uh, on the national stage.